as you can see, it's still dark. It's 5.06, you know, a couple, this week, 5.06 was sunrise. Now it's not. Um, it's amazing getting up every day around dawn or before dawn because you can watch the, uh, you know, the time, the time change. It's like, we so just kind of miss it, right? We miss this, 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 you know, epic event of, um, That, uh, that basically is the reason why we exist, this, the, the, the time zone change. Because the time zone change really represents the relationship of the sun and earth. And, and if we didn't have the angle that we have, which was caused by a meteor hitting us, or a planetoid that created our moon, that... Um, you know, we wouldn't exist from all speculation. We'd be spinning too fast and uh, days would come and go and I don't know, there may be life, but I don't think there'd been any human life. That one event, that catastrophic event. And I hope that, you know, the catastrophic event that we're bringing upon ourselves with, this, with pesticides is potentially gonna have the same effect and open our eyes as it did I mean when the American Indians and the Indians basically wiped out much of the big game uh, that's one theory that the all the big game disappeared because of um, us right that we systematically wiped out the mammoth and the giant sloth beautiful can you imagine a big peaceful giant sloth that moves so slow in South America that you know but was a vegetable eater, big, big teddy bear that you'd want to go over and hug, but would make damn good eating. You know, we've been wiping out species for, you know, for, for 15,000 years. That's when those species disappeared, around 15,000, or actually, um, yeah, 15,000 years ago, and coincidentally. And, uh, yeah. So now it's funny, when I look at these rice fields, I don't know if you can see them, it's a little dark, I just see death. There's a, there, look, here's crows looking for their early morning, you know, toxic bombs. They're out there. It's cold, it's colder, so, you know, the crows are gonna be gone. I'm telling you right now, within five years, you're not gonna see crows. Five years, that's all it's gonna be, five years. Um, for them to be chemically castrate themselves and then our crows are going to be gone. And they'll be, they'll be still crows, but just not as many in, as they are now. And they really, there isn't as many as, as there was. Uh, you know, I, I remember five years ago, I'd see these massive gatherings and I haven't seen them anymore. Here's a, here's a farmer who's busy doing her watering at five in the morning. This is passionate. If only she knew about you know you know that the, the the rice fields around here right? these are all soba now they're planting soba soba is buckwheat so buckwheat now is getting planted it's buckwheat time so all this is buckwheat all in here is buckwheat soba great food for flower for bees but again it doesn't matter because the water supply for them is is so contaminated that is, is just pretty much pointless. So, um, you know, it's really odd because Japan is is such a leading company country in the regards to the proto, you know, Kyoto Protocol and understanding the environment and CO2 emissions. But something even bigger and a bigger threat to their national security and their way of life and everything else, and you know, that. You know, pesticides is a solution to a short-term problem, to a, to, a, to a simple problem, okay? It's a simple a solution for a simple problem. How do I stop things from eating my plant? Pesticides, simple. However, it, you know, the complex problem is the ecosystem, right? And even though you're gonna get short-term gain 
from pesticides, the long-term effect of pesticides is going to be catastrophic. Especially when you consider this data of bee decline, which wasn't calculated in with the um, limits to growth data, right? So in limits to the growth data, uh, there's going to be a, sh a massive shortfall of food. Well, that's going to be compounded with um, with the loss of bees. Now there is a, you know, the loss of bees does provide a massive market opportunity, right? So people like Bayer and these other agro agrochemicals, for them wiping out the bees, that's great business for them, not bad business. And I explain why because, for example, I was talking to a strawberry, uh, not strawberry, but um, um, uh, tomato farmer. You know where I get my tomatoes? This. Uh, these are more important, so I'm not going to even check my traps down here. Probably nothing in there. In there. The crabs this last this week died mysteriously. Just died the crabs. I think it's again it's all the pesticides, which in, coincidentally are being is being dumped now on all the you know the June, uh, July, August are the worst, m most deadly times. So I think it's I think it's just sterilized and killed the rivers because I've stopped catching pretty much anything except for some turtles. So, uh, I've lost my train of thought. I can't pause and go back what I was saying because I got distracted with the water. Um, simple complex problems, I think. So the innovation of pesticides is really a solution to deal with a simple problem. Say good morning, this lady. She walked me back. Oh, hi, Zaymas. <laughs> so, um, however, the more complex problem, our ecosystem, the relationship of insects with our relation uh, is 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 not really understood. And in our effort to target just one kind of insect, those that are damaging the crops, what we're doing is destroying, you know, 30, oh well, over 100,000 other insects, species, that, are, that feed animals and pollinate for us. So, ah, I remember now, so in a way, wiping out these insects, these pollinators, these natural pollinators, is creating a new market for companies like Bayer and Monsanto, these big agrochemicals, because I just discovered that what uh, tomato growers in Japan are doing are having to use um, basically chemical, chemical um, pollinators for their, for their tomatoes. So they go around and spray. So it's hand pollination. We're using chemicals to hand pollinate. Which what does that mean? That means more money for these agrochemicals. For these few stakeholders that are basically they're basically the irony is these few stakeholders right are are basically destroying you know a hundred thousand species right maybe a million species of insect a beneficial insect um, and in doing so, they're creating a new market for the um, chemical pollinator that will make them even more money because these farmers are going to turn to it. It's insidious. It's like let's let's you know let's destroy our partners for the you know and then make they then then in their void make billions off of their destruction so it's, it's to me it's, it's, it's sad that we're still so ignorant and money and this greed and this desire for this this invention of ours is the primary reason why we are systematically <laughs> sterilizing our world sterilizing it 
Uh, sun still's not up. Look at that. It's, it's like every day. It's like a five. You know, it's significant. What's this thing here? Uh, it's someone's coffee. I thought it was an animal. No, no, it wasn't gonna be roadkill. So here I am, just giving the talk. Still tired. Just woke up. Probably could tell in my voice. Farmers are up. See, the, not sitting the. You know. The, the uh, clock's back gives farmers at least hours. It's a Saturday morning, so some Japanese will be going to work. I'm just coming out here. I got to be back at six o'clock to move the car to plant it because today's uh, uh, park the car. Even though I think it's a silly adventure to do so um, because we can't get out anyway. Really, really sick. Look at the size of this big old tractor. Is this that Fent? I think this is a Fent tractor. My buddy's tractor that I saw. It looks like the Fent. So here's the Fent. Right here. That sure is. That's a different, that's a John Deere. Good old American tractor. And here's the, the sunflowers are all out. Let's check on the bees. I hope he's not coming with me down here. So here I am at the beehive. Tell you what though, these um, uh, these girls are early early birds. Uh -huh. So the crows. It's about cheap. You know, one good thing about bees. Uh, he's ignoring me. おはよう。おはよう。これは日本人の三つ鉢。日本人三つ鉢。珍しいでしょ？珍しい。これは三つ鉢。It's <laughs> like crazy guy gene talking about bees. So uh, let me get my socks on and do a hive inspection and let you know. Uh, most likely these bees are not going to have survived. Uh, not the bees, but the queen that I put in there. So that's what I'm checking on at, at the break of dawn here.